for a few moments with respect to a lot of the reform legislation that has been passed in the last couple of years, uh, tax reform, criminal justice reform, juvenile justice reform. Um, there's a question here, we've heard questions this week. With respect to uh, the juvenile justice reform package, there's um, some cost savings at the state level that have been generated, but uh, along with that, some concurrent costs are, are becoming larger for counties. And we've had the question about this, is the legislature supportive of all redirecting some of those cost savings back to counties to help them deal with the increased cost of juvenile justice reform? I'll lob that one out there and let y'all weigh in any, any way you like. Well, and let me, before I answer your question, say this. Secretary Kemp's office really and truly has done an outstanding job. I mean, they have been hit hard from a budgetary standpoint. And, you know, they, we rely on them so much for services and all, but they've done an outstanding job. He streamlined that office. And, and to his credit, whenever he comes and asks, we know that it's really a need. It's not just somebody else coming in to ask. So he has done an outstanding job, and I can use the board. He's done a great job. As far as juvenile justice reform, you know, to be honest with you, I, I haven't been uh, approached about that before now. Um, it's something that, yeah, we'll be glad to look into. Um, you know, we, we're trying to streamline government, period. When it comes to juvenile justice reform, criminal justice reform, tax reform, those kind of situations, where we can find it the state can save money, that's where we're trying to go. And if it means that maybe we can help redirect some of the money back to you because of the cost there, then yes, I believe we'd be willing to look at it as well. But, I mean, you, you also got to look at yeah, with the criminal justice reform, I mean, we realize no longer can we as a state afford to just keep locking people up. I mean, those that create or, or commit violent crimes, yes, they need to be locked up. Others that we may be able to go in and be able to uh, get them back into society, make them so that they're a, a citizen that is a law-abiding citizen that can go out and be productive for them and their families. That's what we're trying to do with that. Same thing with the juvenile justice tax reform. So those are cost-saving measures that we're trying to look at from the state to streamline. And I'm sure if we can try to help, we'll be glad to look at it. Appreciate that. Do you want to pick any time? Yeah, I'll, I'll make a few. You know, uh, this was my first legislative session, so I am the first one. So I've kind of come in on the tail end of some of the governor's uh, reform packages and some of the packages. Under the the, uh, I'm not showing you under the bus. <laughs> <laughs> Way, way on the point. <laughs> anyway, uh, so, um, you know, just to kind of catch up, bring myself up to speed, so to speak, this took a little while to really understand about what all has, has went on prior to my, my, my being elected and also from currently being elected in this past year, we did pass juvenile justice reform. And, and, you know, those are some things that I do believe that on the state level we do need to look at and trying to find ways to streamline our criminal justice system because it does cost the state uh, a lot of money. And, and if you go look at the costs over the last couple of years, those costs have constantly increased, increased exponentially. And uh, we're just trying to find ways at the state level to help make sure that those costs on, this, on the state uh, is, is as less burdens, burdensome as possible. And I'll echo the comments that Jay made in saying that, uh, you know, that if there are some things that we can help the local levels do or the county levels do that, that you see are, are issues that, that are arising, let us know those and, and we'll take a look at those and see what we can do on the state level policy-wise to help make uh, make sure that, that it's, it's not as burdensome uh, or, or as least burdensome as possible. Um, but uh, we're, we're, we'll, we'll look forward to, to looking at the hearings and those, uh, those comments or, or whatever those may be. Okay, and I'm going to ask Clint Mueller to wait. Deborah Nesbitt, many of you know, is our Associate Legislative Director who works directly with uh, public safety and the courts and, and a lot of the health and human service issues that you all deal with. And, and, and Deborah uh, is not with us today, but I know Clint knows a lot of what she knows. I'm going to ask Clint to go ahead and, and weigh in on this particular topic. Well, one other thing. Sure, absolutely. Started, I think that uh, one of the things that we really try to focus on, especially from the state level, uh, and, and we have some in, in the 7th District, I'm sure some of you are familiar with, are our accountability. Uh, and utilizing those courts more so uh, today than we have in the past than using uh, our, our regular criminal courts and, and focusing and trying to shift more of the burden, so to speak, to those accountability courts. That way we can rehabilitate uh, those offenders and, 
make them more productive citizens of society. Uh, and those are some of the reform efforts that, that we're really trying to, to push forward. Um, and I meant to say that earlier in the law, and I just thought about that statement. That's, that's, that's why that's why we're here, and you have that privilege. <laughs> well, I think that from obviously partners with the state when it comes to the criminal justice system, um, the, if you look at the entire criminal justice system, it's really being run in a partnership between the state and local government. And we have the same goal in mind, right? It, it's, to, it's to save the, the citizens of Georgia money, and, and obviously, as Jake already said, there's a lot of those that need to be locked up, but uh, we just can't afford to continue the escalating inflationary costs that we have in this criminal justice system. So to save the taxpayers' money, we got to save them money at all levels of government, right? It doesn't do any good to save them on their state taxes, but then increase their local taxes. You got to save them at all, all the various levels of government. They pay taxes that. And so as we um, continue to, to look at, you know, shutting down YDC youth detention centers, in fact, there was an article I know in the paper this morning about Paulding County, I saw a youth detention center there, they're closing the door on. Um, there's going to be a need still for these people to get services in the community. And I know in a lot of the rural areas of the state, some of you probably aren't set up like Charlotte is in Gwinnett County to handle these community services. Uh, you may or may not have the resources in, in your community. And our judicial circuits are also very different across the state. I just heard yesterday um, from somebody that says that their district attorney had decided there was a provision in the law that says that if, if they felt like they were, had an overload of cases already, then they could just refuse to um, prosecute any of the juvenile cases and let the county go hire, hire, a, hire a law firm or hire an outside, outside attorneys to do that. Well, obviously, that's very costly if you've got the infrastructure in place and you don't utilize that infrastructure, you go hire outside law firms to do it. Um, we do know that there's going to be more attorneys involved now. There's more representation required. So from the public defender side as well as the prosecutor side, there's going to be a need for more, for more legal counsel. So we've got to continue to figure out how we can make these accountability courts work uh, across the state, not just in the urban areas, but everywhere in the state of Georgia so that a lot of these cases can get deferred before they get too far, far down the road. But uh, I feel confident that the General Assembly um, you know, again, have the same goal in mind as we do at, at the county level. We want to we want to save Georgia's citizens, uh, save save their taxes, and, and we need to work in partnership to make sure that happens. We'll continue to dialogue with them about what we can do. I know one of the things that's on your priority list there is uh, some funding for some of the attorneys that are required for this the new juvenile justice system. Uh, we've had discussions with Representative Wendell Willard in the House about that legislation. And, uh, I think he's going to work with us closely this coming legislative session to try to get some done in that area. Thank you, Clint.